So next, let's 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 look at how documents are represented for clustering. And for the purpose of this lecture, we are going to assume that we are continuing with that same representation where we have each document as represented by a vector of TF-IDF weights. Okay, and we are not going to do normalization here, so we are not going to convert each vector, each document vector into a unit vector and you'll see the reason for that um, you could do that but let's say we're not going to do that uh, right now if we don't normalize we can still compute the cosine similarity by looking at the angles between the vectors right whereas if we had done length normalization then we could actually look at the distance between the vectors in terms of the U U uh, not the Euclidean distance but the distance along the surface of that v-dimensional sphere. So, assuming that we have documents represented as vectors of TF-IDF weights, we need obviously some notion of similarity between documents or distance between documents and we are going to continue with the idea of cosine similarity. If we have a score for cosine similarity, of course the cosine similarity lies between 0 and 1. So, the distance between two documents can be defined as 1 minus the similarity. Okay, so, even if we are talking about distance, you can, you know, think of it as just the inverse of similarity in some way. The other thing that we have to decide when we want to do clustering is how many clusters do we want to come up with. So, many of the algorithms, many of the clustering algorithms have assume that you have predefined a priori how many clusters you want to divide your collection into. So that number will be fixed before, uh, that number will be fixed and the algorithm will use that number for clustering the documents. Or you can be completely data driven where you don't fix the number of clusters in advance but you start with some uh, number of clusters and then you decide either to merge different clusters into a super cluster if it turns out that there are very few documents in some clusters and very large number of documents in other clusters. Okay, or you could decide to split larger clusters into two or more smaller clusters. Now obviously one trivial clustering would be to have each document belong to a separate cluster by itself. So that's a trivial clustering and we want to avoid that. Okay. Uh, at the same time we also want to avoid too large clusters because if a cluster is too large then the user will have to again click on that cluster and then navigate within that cluster to finally reach what he or she is interested in. Okay, I mean we saw that uh, in, in an earlier example. So, this is something I already mentioned. Ideally, we want to capture semantic similarity between documents when we cluster documents. Right? Ideally, you want all books that deal with the subject of biology to be in the same cluster. But obviously, when we automate this process, we have to ultimately rely on text appearing within documents to decide whether or not uh, to decide which documents will be classified under biology. So we will use cosine similarity and a vector space representation for documents. And we will in fact talk a lot about distance but you can think of distance just as 1 minus the similarity between documents. Okay, and the reason we will talk about distance is because uh, it will be more intuitive when uh, uh, when defining which documents are close to one another. Okay, so smaller distance means that they are more close. Uh, 